Imagine not being able to eat inside of a restaurant simply because of your skin color. As recently as 40 years ago, many public eating establishments in our nation were for whites only. Through violence and intimidation, the rights of blacks as citizens were limited or denied. In almost all aspects of life, segregation or the separation of the races was required in public areas. They were forbidden from sharing the same waiting rooms at bus or train terminals or sitting next to each other on trains, buses, boats, or in movie theaters and courtrooms. Born on May 19, 1925 in Ahoma, Nebraska, Malcolm X was a famous black nationalist leader who served as a spokesman for the Nation of Islam during the 1950s and 60s. Malcolm X was not always Malcolm X. Actually, his birth name was Malcolm Little, but he refused to carry the name Little because this was the name that his father's ancestors had received from their owner when they were slaves. Instead of Little, he put in X because he said that his real name had been lost when his ancestors were forced to become slaves. After his journey to Mecca, he used the Muslim name Malik ash Shabbat and continued to be known as Malcolm X. He rose to worldwide attention with the name Malcolm X. He died with the name El Haj Malik El Shabazz. He was one of the most electrifying speakers this country has ever produced. Some of the things he said rocked his contemporaries and his adversaries. For his own people. He developed into what he became from a turbulent childhood. Born in Omaha, Nebraska, raised in Lansing, Michigan, the son of a Baptist preacher who followed Marcus Garvey and was brutally murdered in Malcolm's youth. Malcolm's school ambitions were crushed by a white teacher who told him to be realistic about being a nigger and forget about being a lawyer and learn to do something with his hands instead. And so he floundered. He went to Roxbury, Massachusetts to live with his sister, Ella. Because he was black, society didn't have much to offer to Malcolm X. He decided to turn against it and started committing crimes. In 1946, he got arrested during a burglary and was sent to jail for seven years. During this time, he met a Muslim leader, Elijah Muhammad, who taught him about Islam. The first messages from Malcolm were to stay out of trouble, clean up his life, and to begin a self-development. Malcolm remembered his ambitions to become a lawyer, a spokesperson for the oppressed, a role that he was gifted for. To make up for his lack of knowledge, he started reading and studying everything from dictionaries to grammar books, later law, science, and f philosophy, and he learned more about his faith, Islam. When Malcolm X left prison in 1952, he was a changed man, and he was willing to work with the Nation of Islam of Black American Muslims. He started a newspaper that succeeded to attract many followers. During his time, the congregation grew from 400 to 40,000. He also began to demand more rights for the black community. His activism and his eloquence brought him many supporters who believed in his ideas. For instance, the average so-called Negro, he doesn't think that he can uh, go into business and provide jobs for himself. And because of this, he thinks that he can only get a job from the white man, or he can only get clothes from the white man, or he can only get food from the white man. The thing that the white man has done for himself and his kind uh, if our people could uh, be uh, wrecked, if, they could, if we could be cured of our slave mentality that was uh, indoctrinated into us during slavery, we would realize that just as the white man can do these things for himself and his kind, we can get together in unity and harmony and do the same thing for ourselves and our kind. One concept that distinguished him from other civil rights leaders, like Martin Luther King Jr., was that he told black people to realize that they have the right to self-defense. This brought him much criticism, but this criticism is often misusing his words by claiming that he was calling to violence because he did not believe that there were other ways to achieve justice. However, there is evidence for the contrary. The black men have to be able to sit down at the same table 
The white man has to feel free to speak his mind without hurting the feelings of that Negro. And the so-called Negro has to feel free to speak his mind without hurting the feelings of the white man. Then they can bring the issues that are under the rug out on top of the table and take an intelligent approach to get the problem solved. The only Another strong proof for his inclusiveness was in the letters he wrote to his community and followers after his hajj or journey to the holy site of Islam. During the past 11 days, I've eaten from the same plate, drunk from the same glass, slept on the same rug, and prayed to the same God with fellow Muslims whose eyes were the bluest of blue, whose hair was the blondest of blonde, and whose skin was the whitest of white. We are truly the same because their belief in one God has removed the white from their minds, the white from their behavior, and the white from their attitudes. Wearing the Iram garb of a pilgrim, I made the seven circuits around the Kaaba. I drank from the sacred well of Zemzem. I ran between the hills of Safa and Marwa. I stood on Mount Ararat and with my brothers proclaimed, I come, O Lord, I come. God is great. Lead us, O Lord, in peace. And for the first time in my 39 years on this earth, I stood before the creator of all and felt like a complete human being. This was the first time in his life he had seen a society that did not distinguish between race or nationality and that demonstrated a sense of inclusiveness that Malcolm had never experienced before. This was a powerful experience and it had changed his perspective on mankind. He started to understand that in order to improve human society, this improvement had to include all members, not just one side. On his return, he said, For his ideas and his ability to mobilize and convince his community so that they could achieve a better life, he joined many other civil rights leaders in the same fate. He was brutally shot on February 21, 1965, during one of his speeches. Malcolm X had always pointed out the idea of taking the struggle of the black African Americans to an international level. He wanted to challenge the old powers because they had treated the African nations all over the world as colonies and exploited them. He understood this oppression as the nature of white rule everywhere in the world and said that everywhere people were oppressed by the same powers. He supported the Palestinian cause and said that the ghetto of Harlem was just as bad as the Algiers under the French colonial rule. He praised the Egyptian President Nuss for standing up against England, France, and Israel. He also supported the Mahoma Rebellion in Kenya against British. Malcolm X was calling for an internationalization of the civil rights struggle, and he wanted to show to the world how he could balance the power was unequal. This made him an inconvenient and worrisome critic of his government. During his lifetime, he had been a leader to his people. Leading by word and action, his legacy lives on the struggle inside the U.S. against inequality and discrimination. But it also lives on for the nations that are under control over an oppressor and those who strive for freedom and justice. Malcolm's legacy is that he declared that people have the right to defend themselves against oppressors who use violence against them. He opened people's eyes to mechanisms and origins of the problem of racism and the bad actions that result out of it. And he showed them ways to fight against it. It. As a Muslim, he followed the principle of justice and the human right to self-defense with moderation. His legacy continues to live on as many countries are still suffering oppression today.